so here's an example of uh, 18 different moves, and it's showing you uh, some of the uh, motion history, uh, motion energy images of it. So we now have this problem of how do we recognize motion energy, motion history images. Well, these are kind of grayscale, blobby-like images. And the good news is, even in 1999, there had been about 150 years, or maybe 20 years, pick your favorite number, of computer vision describing gray blobs and trying to say, okay, I recognize this gray blob as being different than that gray blob. And that's basically all we had to do. So basically, in 1999, we did some sort of what I think of as old style computer vision. Uh, we're gonna compute some summarization statistic of that blob. We're gonna compute some features of that blob that have something to do with the distribution of the, where the pixels are and their intensities in the MHI. And we're gonna build a generative model, okay? There are a couple of reasons we were doing generative models. One is that uh, discriminative models hadn't become as uh, popular as they had been, and uh, so Jim Davis's advisor was not smart enough to tell him to go make sure you use a discriminative model. I will tell you that people have subsequently used it, and of course it makes your recognition better. Generative models also have the nice property, as we mentioned before, that when I come in, if I come up with a new uh, aerobics move, right? So I want to add one. I just have to build a model of that category. I don't have to, to retrain my entire system, okay? Whether you use generative or discriminative, the idea is that we're going to compute these statistics and then do the recognition. So how are we going to describe these things? And this allows me to spend a little bit of time telling you about some very old computer vision work that becomes that's still important and, and fundamental. And that's the notion of the moments of a shape. So, so some of you from physics, you know about second order moments, right? Axis of inertia. The moment is the distribution of matter about a point or an axis or something like that. So in computer vision, the moments are defined in a very simple way, right? So the ij moment, okay, is just the sum over the xy of the whole image of x raised to the i power, y raised to the i power, but you're only counting points where the um, image is non-zero, okay? So um, if i is a binary image, then this is a one or a zero, so you're only counting it at points that are turned on. If it's a grayscale image, then you're weighting the point by essentially how heavy it is, which is a little bit like when you do moments of inertia. If you've got little points that are heavier than others, they add more to the inertia about the axis. So these are um, the moments. And so you could talk about the second order moments or the first order moments or even the zeroth order moments, right? What would this be for the zeroth order moment? Well, if i is zero and j is zero, then these are one. This would just be counting up the number of non-zero pixels which means that M00 is the area, ooh, right? Because the area of the picture that's non-zero, that's just the sum, it's the counting of the non-zero uh, pixels, all right? The uh, problem uh, with regular moments, of course, is that they're sensitive to what the X and Y position actually is, right? So you kind of want the moments of a shape to be independent of where the shape is. So there's something called the central moments that just take x, but they subtract off the mean of x and y and subtract off the mean of y. And it is uh, otherwise just the same. So that's this mu p q, and it's x minus x bar to the p, y minus y bar to the q. All right? And um, you know what is x bar? Well, one way of thinking is the average x. So the average x would just be the sum of all the x's divided by however many x's there are, well, that's what this is, right? x bar is m10, the first moment uh, in x, divided by the overall area, remember the m00, same thing in y. So that's regular moments. But the problem with moments, of course, is that they're very sensitive to a variety of changes. So if I scale the image up, Right? Obviously, the moment's going to change. The area will get bigger. The distances get, get larger. If I rotate it, uh, things might change. All sorts of problems. 